Tonight, former President Trump speaking out for the first time since that $83 million judgment against him. His rally late today, slamming the decision on social media, vowing to fight it. His rivals weighing in. Will his accuser, E. Jean Carroll, see any of that money? Boeing 737 MAX 9's back in the air. The airline executive who sat next to the door plug and the passengers who didn't know they were on the same type of plane. I would have asked to change to another flight. The new warning about traveling to the Bahamas from the U.S. State Department. 18 people have been murdered there in the past month. What you should know if you have booked a trip there. The biggest cruise ship ever has just set sail. The over-the-top attractions on board. And cash is back. Why, skipping the plastic may save you big money. This is NBC Nightly News with Jose diaz Ballard. Good evening. It is a massive verdict against former President Trump. $83 million in a defamation case stemming from allegations of sexual assault from decades ago. Mr. Trump, moments ago, only briefly referencing the verdict in a rally in Las Vegas. His first on-camera reaction to it after blasting the judgment on social media. His remaining rival for the Republican nomination, Nikki Haley, campaigning in South Carolina tonight, has added it to her attacks on the former president. The presidential campaign and Mr. Trump's legal cases have been on a collision course for months. Now, they're both playing out in real time. Just take a look at this. On your left, the Republican primary calendar for the next couple of months. On your right, Trump's legal calendar with a ruling expected any day in a New York fraud trial that could cost him his business. We begin our coverage tonight with Liz Kreutz traveling with the former president in Las Vegas. Tonight, former President Donald Trump out of the courtroom and back on the campaign trail. I'm the victim of it, but that's okay. I'm the victim of it. And Holding a packed wrong. rally in Las Vegas one day after a Manhattan federal jury ordered him to pay $83.3 million to writer E. Jean Carroll for defaming her after she accused him of sexually abusing her in the mid-90s. Look at yesterday. Look at all this crap that's going on. But we keep marching forward. Trump has vowed to appeal, calling the decision absolutely ridiculous and the case a witch hunt. Carroll said the jury's verdict was a great victory for every woman who stands up when she's been knocked down. But still unclear just when she could see any of the $83 million awarded to her. Given what appears to be Trump's limited chances to win on appeal, at some point, E. Jean Carroll will most likely see that money, and likely all of it. The problem is the time frame, so it might be years from now. Thank you. Also remaining to be seen if Trump will pay any political price. His sole remaining rival for the GOP nomination, Nikki Haley, campaigning in South Carolina tonight. All that time that he's spending in a courtroom defending himself, he's not fighting for the American people. But back in Nevada at the Trump rally. Do you think any of this is going to move voters in the general election in any way it will bring more to him i just think the whole thing was you know a sham obviously it was you know a witch hunt liz kreutz is in las vegas liz vice president harris is also campaigning in nevada tonight yeah, Jose, that's right. She's also here in Vegas, just a mile away. And even though the primary season is just getting started, it feels like we're already shifting to the general with both the Biden and Trump campaigns fighting to win this critical swing state. Jose? Liz Kreutz in Las Vegas. Thank you. Today, another airline cleared the 737 MAX 9 for takeoff. It's the fleet's first weekend of back in the sky since the FAA grounded them after that terrifying midair incident earlier this month. Steve Patterson tonight with how passengers feel about being back on board. Tonight, the big push to get the MAX 9 back in the friendly skies, now in full flight. Passengers landing on last night's flight from Vegas to Portland caught off guard. When I saw the seat card that it was a 737 MAX 9 and I thought, oh, okay, we're flying again. And I didn't think too much about it, actually. Alaska putting them back in the air three weeks after that door plug on flight 1282 blew out over Portland, with some passengers showing apprehension. I would have asked to train to another flight. I think they should have told us at least. Alaska showing what they say are completed rigorous inspections to its 737 MAX 9, deeming each plane as airworthy. The airline showing its confidence by seating its own COO next to the plane's door plug on the first flight back in service. 
but we're going to put uh, a higher bar for Boeing and we're going to hold their feet to the fire in terms of aircraft delivery and quality. Boeing's company culture and safety standards called into question the NTSB and FAA investigating what went wrong while several passengers have filed suit. Thursday, Boeing stopped all 737 MAX production to focus on quality control. In a message to employees, the company's CEO saying our long-term focus is on improving our quality so that we can regain the confidence of our customers. We own these issues and we'll make them right. All of this is more passengers put their trust and their lives in vows to maintain sky-high expectations. Steve, how quickly can we expect a full return for this model? Jose Alaska expects to have each one of its 65 planes in service by next week. Meanwhile, United's first MAX 9 landed tonight. Jose? Steve Patterson in Los Angeles. Thank you. We have a new travel alert tonight about the Bahamas. The U.S. State Department is now warning tourists about a rash of murders and violence in a place known for some of the most breathtakingly beautiful beaches in the world. Marisa Parra has the latest. <laughs> A new warning for Americans looking to trade the white of winter for the white sands of the Bahamas. A dramatic spike in crime has prompted the U.S. State Department to raise their travel advisory from level one to level two, recommending visitors exercise increased caution. The U.S. Embassy in the Bahamas says there have been 18 murders in the capital of Nassau within the first few weeks of 2024, some in broad daylight with retaliatory gang violence as the primary motive. There's always been an existing gang culture in the Bahamas and other Caribbean nations. But what's really noteworthy here is it's spilled over into the streets and is now affecting tourists. The Bahamian prime minister this week announcing a crackdown on crime. The persistent cycle of violence and crime has been a dark cloud over our nation. U.S. officials warning in Friday's advisory that violent crimes such as burglaries, armed robberies and sexual assaults occur in both tourist and non-tourist areas. And all of this days after the department reissued their level three reconsider travel advisory further south in the Caribbean in Jamaica. So what's the best advice if you're planning a trip there? That does not mean you should call off your trip, but rather you should focus on the precautions. For travelers, the State Department recommends don't answer the door unless you know who it is. Do not physically resist a robbery attempt. Enroll in the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program for emergency alerts. And even in paradise, always have a safety plan. Marissa Parra, NBC News. President Biden is in South Carolina tonight. One of the president's challenges in that state, and one he really faces across the country, is a major drop in support among black voters. What's driving this shift? Aaron Gilchrist is talking to voters in South Carolina. Tonight, President Biden back in South Carolina. His first stop, a black-owned barbershop in downtown Columbia, in re-election mode with his focus on young and black voters whose support has been slipping. With the Palestinian-Israel war going on, I think my view personally has shifted on Biden. Gen Z, we want to see things getting done and not just hearing about pro-America, pro-freedom, and pro-democracy. How's it 16-term Congressman Jim Clyburn leading the charge for Biden here, just as he did four years ago. There's no better way to, for good people to break their silence than to march to the ballot boxes. An NBC News survey in November showed 61 percent of black voters would choose Biden over a Republican. In 2020, NBC News exit polls showed Biden won 87 percent of the black vote. What does he need to do to make people feel like he's done a good job? I think he's done a good job, and that's what we've got to do, mm. is get people to see that. Clyburn again making the case for Biden in a state where Clyburn is revered, a leading voice in black communities for decades. He calls himself President Biden's validator. That's what we've got to do between now and November. Tell people what it is that we've done. Tell them what the rescue plan is all about. Tell them what the infrastructure bill is all about. The campaign also taking that message to young voters with college visits, social media posts, and radio spots. University of South Carolina junior Kyle Brantley supports Biden, but says students want a more visible seat at the table. When the campaign understands that and realizes that now, uh, and especially moving forward, they'll be able to connect more with the youth voting bloc. The foundation is already there, and 
Now we just have to get them reelected so that they can continue the work. Aaron, making South Carolina the first official Democratic primary was also a nod to black voters. It was, Jose. A campaign official told me that moving South Carolina and Nevada earlier on the calendar elevates the diverse groups that President Biden will need to win in November. Jose? Aaron Gilchrist in Carolina, in South Carolina. Thank you very much. When we come back, the shocking allegations against the wrestling titan Vince McMahon, now out at the WWE. Also, the largest cruise ship in the world setting sail today. You won't believe what's on board. The world's largest cruise ship set sail today for an historic voyage. This is the massive Royal Caribbean new icon of the seas. It's almost as long as the height of the Empire State Building. And get this, the ship can carry more than 7,000 passengers. It even has its own water park and ice skating arena. By the way, the cost to build it, $2 billion. And now to a story that's impacting your budget. Paying with cash has become a dividing line in a digital age when so many shoppers are using credit cards and apps. But now, cash is making a comeback, with some sellers offering deep discounts. Christine Romans explains. On the menu at this restaurant in New York, linguine, oysters, and a 10% discount if you pay with cash. We came up with this idea just uh, to push sales to give uh, an incentive to our guests to come back to spend more. Owner Lamia Funti started offering it during the pandemic, and it's been so successful, she kept it. We have seen an increase. At Isabella's Pizza Pub in Greensboro, North Carolina, a 3% discount if you pay with cash. I put the cash discount into place to help reduce our fees as a business, to incent the customers to pay in cash, which will help me increase the pay of my employees. For businesses like Kathy's, those fees can add up. She says she paid over $30,000 last year to credit card companies. The cash discount has long been common at gas stations, and often your plumber or electrician will offer you a better cash deal too. But recently, more Americans are finding ways to cash in on these deals. In fact, the amount of cash purchases with a discount soared 66 percent from 2015 to 2022. Andrews Young has been only using cash for two years and saves $50 a month. If I can get a discount, why not? Now you can find cash deals at places you wouldn't necessarily think of. Some car dealerships offer discounts. So do auto body shops and even furniture stores. And if you're getting married, you're in luck. Many wedding vendors will give you a deal if you pay in cash, from the venue to the photographer, even to the dress. And for Andrews, bowling. I would say some of the places that I'm seeing the cash discount be useful for is in gas, entertainment, and then also with service-based um, work. And we're not talking chump change. These discounts can range from 3 to more than 10%. Most transactions are still put on credit cards, so cash may not be king just yet. It won't build your credit score, but it does offer one other benefit. When you use cash, there's no interest rate on it either if you right. can't pay it off. Correct. So once you use it, it's paid for, it's done with, you don't have to worry about it. Christine Romans, NBC News, New York. When we come back, the heartwarming story behind this celebration. <laughs> There's good news tonight. You know, so often good news doesn't get as much attention as the bad. So every Saturday we highlight the many people who spread joy and love. These are just some of those stories this week. This is what love looks like. At Liberty High School in Peoria, Arizona. Students and staff united, shaving their heads in solidarity with classmate Hayden McQuillan. Truly amazing. And teacher Tyler Hussey, both fighting cancer. Yeah! Assistant principal Jim Byrne helping lead this show of support. This guy is amazing, but just what he does for these kids in this community, it was an easy, easy thing to do to step up and, and support him. It gave me the, the chills and the emotions of, of hope, of inspiration. I don't think I'd be here without the support of this school. I really don't. And to talk about going above and beyond. Take a look at this. That's Amazon driver Jaquan Fletcher shoveling snow for a customer in Ohio. Jaquan was delivering a package to Don Wheeler, who uses a wheelchair 
and decided to clear his ramp. Sir, God bless you. And, and, and that little gesture went a long way. In Wisconsin, a big surprise at this girl's varsity basketball game. Look there, that's player Anna Necht moved to tears as she walks across the court to embrace her dad, Randy. In the hospital for months, but his friends hatched a secret plan to help him surprise his daughter on parents' night. And there was suspense this week for a California family watching the Oscar nominations. For best documentary short film, the nominees are Nai Nai and Wai Po. That's filmmaker Sean Wong and his family celebrating his success the moment they found out his documentary is on the list. Sean is nominated for a short film called Nai Nai and Waipoa about the everyday lives of his two grandmothers. Their best friends who live together. In a way, they each represent a part of who all of us are. I feel so fortunate that I have these amazing examples of how to lead with joy and humor. We really made this short film as a way to help people like them feel seen. What is the, the message that you see you and, and your family receiving from these two extraordinary women? Take the time to um, really see them and spend time with them. There is beauty right in front of you. <laughs> Growing old doesn't mean fading away. What a wonderful celebration. I want to wish Sean and his grandmothers all the best of luck at the Oscars in March. That's NBC Nightly News for this Saturday. Kate Snow will be here tomorrow night. I'm Jose diaz Bolart. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Good night. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.